Here's your BYD Atro 3 alternate that you really can't miss on the road. This is the Amoda E5 and it comes with a range of 430 kilometers with a blade battery and LFP battery of 61 kilowatt hours. It's got a ground clearance of 180 mm, which is more than ample for most rough road driving. And under this hood, you get a motor that produces 340 newton meters of torque, which is fantastic, which actually gives a zero to 100 kilometers per hour in under 10 seconds. And what's really cool about this car is that it's also got a 50 liter frunk, which you really don't see in cars from this price point. And you know what's really amazing about this car? Unlike other cars, and I'm not just talking about EVs, but just other cars in general, it's got an actual full-size tire at the wow. back. So without further ado, I'm gonna hop in the driver's seat and let's go for a drive. Driving this car, the car gives you a normal mm -hmm. mode, a sport, sport mode, mode. EC and an eco mode. and the car with that 340 newton meters of torque is really zippy even in eco mode like foot down and it's easy for an overtake like foot down and you are off and at the speed limit i didn't even need to hit change it into sports mode honestly the car just zooms past as for braking on this car the car does offer some variations in regenerative braking that can be changed through the menu unfortunately there isn't some physical button for a actual regen braking change but that's fine because you usually just leave it on in a place and let the car do the work braking wise true the front brakes are ventilated disc brakes and the rear are regular disc brakes and for a car of this capability is more than ample then coming on to the suspension, it is a bit of a taller car, but the suspensions are plush enough that it handles smooth roads, high-speed cornerings, and bumpy potholes pretty adequately. Somehow this seat in the Omoda A5 is quite upright, so you have this very commanding position, which really comes to use in city traffic maneuvering, like when you need to go into like alleyways and smaller roads also to mention is the fact that if you are newer to driving you have a very good view of the bonnet in front like you can exactly pinpoint where your wheels are at the front and where the car ends at the front in addition to your uh, 360 camera also fun fact about the car is that in situations where i have the indicator on it'll also give me a display of what is on each side of the road like this it's giving me a good display of what's in the, the next lane as well as a lot of beeps and bongs about what's in my blind spots So you can really tell this car is not a combustible car like there's no front grille at all there is a bit of an ac vent down there but no front grille it looks very modern very futuristic kind of looks like a stormtrooper to me i don't know give me a comment down below about what you think so at the front here is the charger port it accepts both ac and dc charging the ac charger can charge up to 11 kilowatts, which means that an overnight charge should be enough. Omoda do supply a slow granny charger, which is about 3.3 kilowatts. That might actually take you up to a day. And come again down here, you do have a CCS type two plugin. So this does accept fast DC charging of up to 80 kilowatts. So when you plug it in into a NEA fast DC charger or any other sort of fast DC charger. Theoretically, because it's a 61 kilowatt hour battery, it should do it in under 45 minutes. But here's the thing, EV batteries don't charge at 100% like your phone battery. It has a bit of a curve that goes up and then like plateaus. 
So when you initially plug it in, it ramps up the charging speed and then post 80%, it again declines. So realistically, even with that fast 80 kilowatt DC charging, it'll probably take you about an hour, give or take. As for the looks on this car, again, super futuristic car. You have a bunch of ADAS sensors on the top there. You have your wipers here and then a big front grille without radiators as I mentioned just an AC vent down there a 360 camera here parking sensors four at the front which is quite cool because most cars just come with two then coming to the side you have these very sharp DRLs and you have your LED headlights here so moving on to the sides of the car these are automatic folding mirrors you have strong contour lines that begin at the front here a bit compact and then just move out here and then you have roof reels here a electronic sunroof at the top and if you've noticed the window panes are also a bit tinted green at the front and a bit black for privacy at green because you can't have the driver not see clear outside the window so green is for protecting against uv rays and for like insulation against the heat and coming down here to the wheels these are 18 inch aero caps with kumo tires so they have thick tire walls which really do a good job in like cushioning out those potholes that you see in the city and on the highway and then you have your 180 mm of ground clearance here and coming to the back because this is a coupe shaped suv you have this like sort of decline at the back large c pillars in this area and then you have rear led lights that just wrap around the car like this here as for the back of the car on top you have a rear spoiler and it's actually got cutouts that you can actually grab onto but not for grabbing onto those are for aerodynamics you have a tail light at the back you have a rear wiper and then you have a good minimalistic sort of omoda badging with like a light bar here and your car e5 badging down here your camera is here and then on this bottom you again have one two three and four parking sensors so eight in total which is fantastic so as for boot on this car it's a very spacious 380 with a lamp on the side and as i mentioned earlier there is an entire proper size spare tire your three kilowatt slow ac charger can also be put here in the middle and while we're used to it, the rear seats do fold in a 60 to 40 ratio, bumping up the boot space to 1,085, which is more than enough for wow. lugging bigger objects as well. So the interiors on the Omoda E5 has it all. <laughs> like, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, this is a black tone interior, but there's also a dual tone interior version. You have leatherette seats and interiors everywhere. You have ambient lighting on this car. Then you have a bit of a wooden plasticky finishing. You have a proper 24.6 inch center console and driver's display, which is the main attraction of this car. Two 12.3 inch screens. You have a 50 watt wireless charger as well as wireless apple carplay and android auto how cool is that and then you have eight sony speakers two on each door on all four doors which makes for like phenomenal sound you also have dual zone climate one for that side of the car one for this side of the car and if you're worried about air quality in the country right now with all the air pollution and warnings coming up, this car actually has a negative ionizer, which means basically it'll ionize the air molecules inside here negatively. They'll stick with the dust particles and float it down, drop it down so that just clean air circulates on top of a 2.5 mm air filter. So kudos on that. This car also has voice commands. Hello. Open the sunroof. Okay. And there you have it. 
Here. Close the sunroof. Okay. Seems to do a pretty good job of accepting most basic commands. So starting with the driver's seat, you have your window controls here, your mirror controls here, your mirror closing and your mirror opening controls are all here. You have a good storage space for a decent size bottle as well as more storage space down here. Tweeter up here. And then coming into the car, you have your charger port, your boot space, your headlight fog light controls. And then coming to the seating positioning, you have you can adjust your steering wheel from a knob down here. It's both rake and reach. So that means you can pull it out, push it in, as well as adjust your height. And as for the seat on this car, there are electronic adjustments for the height basically you can go front and back then you can also adjust the height of the seat by going up and down and finally you also have the option of altering the angle of the seat I'll come a bit closer here uh, there's also a couple of sensors here for basically fatigue on this car which is pretty cool the moment you look away from the front or get distracted these sensors will pick up and give you a quick notice on the dashboard ahead as for the steering wheel, on the right hand side you have your media controls, your voice command and on the left hand side you have your cruise control as well as the speed limiter here and you have a programmable favorite button here. Also on the side, which is a bit of a cool feature, is your brightness settings for your display and just quick volume controls toggles on the right. As for now stocks on this car, so foot on the brake and press for park, D for drive, and then R for reverse. And when you get into reverse, you have your cameras turn on automatically. As for the ceiling on this car console here, you have a anti-glare sort of rear view mirror here. And then you have sunroof that opens up here LED lights for door and then this is a pretty cool thing about the Moda E5 the vanity mirror is quite huge it also has a bit of a light strip that you can actually change to a more softer yellow light or like a brighter white light and then it's a vanity mirror so you can extend it out to the side and also use it to block the sun up ahead Coming onto the passenger side, more leatherette material finishing here, a tweeter there, one touch windows on this side too, and then quite big, just like in the driver's seat, cubbies here. Your seat gets adjustment for height, for reach basically, not for height, and for recline on this side. As for the dashboard, let me quickly hop in. You have a bit of a dual leatherette, plastic wood finishing and like very sharp cut lines. You also have a bit of an Omoda badging here. It's a bit of an Easter egg hidden by the company. And then you have a decent sized glove box here where you can't fit a lot, but more or less most of the things. Also, it's a bit of a weird thing, but for a car which has the driving on the right hand side, your controls for Aww. USB if you want to keep it wired instead of wireless are down here and a USB-C outlet here. I'm not sure why they did that, but hey, <laughs> it is there. And then you have a little cubby down here, which is a tiny bag holder. Cubbies in the middle, your AC button here, your defogger, your hazard lights, your driving mode, and a power on and off button. You have a smaller cubby here, which probably is just good enough for your key. It's got a felt sort of lining inside. And then onto the center armrest also opens up as a cooler box because there is a tiny vent down here that you can open and close in case you want to keep your drinks cooled. Also have a little light, which is a great touch by Omoda. As for the passenger seat at the back, you have a big cubby holder here, which can fit in more. Another tweeter speaker here door opening, closing, getting into the car is quite easy because it's a pretty tall car. Then you have 
bit of a AC vent at the back for passengers. You have two USB ports, a USB-A and a USB-C. Because this is an EV platform, it means flat floor bed. So getting across is quite easy. As for space, footwell space at the bottom is good. Then with the driver's seat in my height of like about 5.9, knee room is ample. And then coming on to me, your headroom, even if it's a coupe shape, they've done a good job just carving the space at the back. Quite liking it at the back here. You do have a light switch in the middle in case you have anything you want to view. And then coming to the back, you do get a rear armrest with two cubby holders, but these are smaller ones probably for your phone and maybe like a to-go coffee or Coke can. Three seat belts for each occupant and something that's really cool about the back seat is there are two isofix points that are clearly visible here you just latch on your baby seat at the back overall i'm very impressed with the car especially with the fact that there's also a bit of a sunroom which means there's more light in the cabin and that just adds into a more spacious feeling at the back It's been about a day I've been driving the Omoda E5 and I am definitely really, really liking it. The car has so many features, like, you can't even imagine. I can't even go through everything in one setting. So many extra features that I didn't even use, honestly. And that's the thing about Chinese EVs. They've become good and they've become good at becoming good very fast, like so fast in the last 10, 15 years. But I do have some gripes I have with this car and something that came into attention is that the ADAS settings, because there are so many embedded in this car, it's a bit intrusive at times. There are a lot of beeps, there are a bit of bongs, there are like warnings here if I do look away for too long and it can get a bit intrusive at times, but luckily you can just go into the settings, the vehicle settings in your center console and just turn everything off and it'll stay off each time you power off the car which is fantastic like i'm looking at you mg <laughs> and the other thing though i noticed with this car is with the accelerator pedal the thing about the accelerator pedal sensitivity is it's instant like that 340 newton meters of torque happens instantly there's a bit of wheel spin happening too but the moment you let go of the accelerator pedal, there's like just a fraction millisecond more of acceleration still happening. This does not mean a lag in all scenarios. It's just when you have your foot down all the way. So that might take some getting used to when you learn how to drive this car. It is an EV car after all and that learning curve on this car is a bit different compared to like your regular IC engines but other than that I am like madly impressed by this car the speakers the sound quality in this car the boot space the fact that it has a proper 18 inch original size rear tire at the back like how fantastic is that then you have a good 340 ish range which is good enough for like intercity travels with like a quick top up in between you might even not need it boot space is quite good too there's also a frunk in the front which really is awesome like byds don't have that do they and so that brings me down to that whole question i asked at the beginning of this video byd auto 3 or a moda e5 like what do you prefer let me know what you think down in the comments below and i'll see you on the next one peace